The rich in this country have gotten a free ride for far too long, and it's because we haven't been taxing their wealth. But we see that Canadians of pretty much every background support doing so. This video is going to talk a bit about that. So if you remember a video I made about a month ago or so, I talked a bit about how new polling from Frank Graves at Ecos indicated that Canadians supported pretty broadly not only a top marginal tax rate of 70% on incomes above a million dollars, but there was additional support for a wealth tax, and I'll read out the poll here, saying a wealth tax is a tax based on the total value of all the assets that someone owns, including bank account, real estate, business ownership, and stocks. Canada does not currently have a wealth tax. To what extent would you support or oppose introducing a 2% wealth tax on all personal assets over 50 million and a 3% wealth tax on all personal assets over 1 billion? And here we see that 69% of Canadians support the idea of a wealth tax on the richest Canadians. This is a pretty big deal because while none of the political parties, at least so far, have offered this plan, it seems to be clearly popular, and when you have numbers of 70%, it means that there's probably supporters of the idea amongst every political party, not necessarily equally within each party, but with, with a poll around 70% of Canadians, it means at least some conservatives support this. But this was just the first poll that explored this idea. There was a piece out just yesterday from Ethan Cox at Ricochet, fantastic source, I really encourage you to check them out if you haven't that explored new polling data from Abacus on behalf of North 99. And it polled 2,000 Canadians, it's a pretty healthy poll size, and asked them a similar question about the wealth tax. Currently, there is no wealth tax in Canada. A wealth tax will be paid by Canadians who own a certain amount of money and assets, including cash savings, investments, property, or businesses that they own. To what extent would you support a 2% wealth tax on households that have at least $50 million or more in total wealth? This means wealthier Canadians who qualify would pay 2% of their wealth above $50 million every year. And here we see something quite similar. We see 67% support. So 48% of, the, of, po of those polled say they fully support it, while only 19% say they have somewhat support. And there's very little opposition to this. And what's crucial about this poll is that it gives us a lot of breakdowns. It gives us a lot of breakdowns. And this is where the North 99 offers us three key takeaways from the poll. And they say, one, there's high and broad support for a wealth tax. Basically, two-thirds of Canadians support the idea, plus 54. And if you look at it another way, it actually has support amongst older voters. Often we see older voters as more conservative than younger voters, but older voters seem to support this idea most of all. And if we're thinking purely pragmatically, who is it that votes? It's older folks. So if you want a policy that seemingly old people support, and because you want to you capitalize on those voters that are going to turn out, maybe this is one of those policies. And finally, even among conservatives, either conservative party members or people who identify as small c conservatives or as right wing, they support this policy as well. They have a plus 36 rating on this issue. So, I mean, this is incredible. This is incredible information. And again, even if this poll has its limitations, of course, polls have margins of errors, no poll is perfect. Even if this is overestimating support for the general idea, it still has a lot of support, even if you were to subtract you know, 10%, 20% from the amount of people who support it. It's such an overwhelming majority that it's unignorable. And again, here I can show you the breakdowns. Here's on, on, on all respondents, it shows the information. It shows that gender, it's pretty much equal, but both men and women support this. Every age bracket supports it. But again, maybe counterintuitively, support tends to rise as ages rise. And again, regionally, there are differences, of course, but across every region in this country, this idea is supported, even in the quote-unquote conservative areas like Alberta and Saskatchewan, you know, the prairies that, that are heavily, you know, aligned with the Conservative Party federally right now. And if we look here and we look at uh, those polled by income, even those people who have over $100,000 a year, who we might call quote-unquote upper middle class and up and, and, and higher, they support this idea. It's supported whether or not you're in a union. It's supported whether or not 
you identify as left, right, or center. It's supported whether or not you plan to vote for the NDP, liberals, or conservatives, or if you're considering voting for any of those three parties. This is one of those political issues, maybe surprisingly, that sort of unites everyone. It really is this multi-partisan issue that the rich in this country aren't paying their fair share in taxes, and one of the ways to get the rich to pay their fair share in taxes is to raise taxes on wealth. The question is, why haven't we seen this policy yet? And I think from the liberals and conservatives, it's pretty clear. It's because their party doesn't actually represent the people that vote for them. They represent the 1%. But they need the support of, you know, much of the 99% to actually win elections. So, they could recognize that this policy is actually popular with a majority of their voters, but it doesn't mean they'll actually implement it. The NDP, this is the party, I think, that is most likely to implement something like this. And that's because it is the party that generally represents the concept of fair taxation, and, crucially, it ties in well with some of Jagmeet Singh's messaging and existing policy. Singh has already talked about increasing capital gains tax rates, which is important because the rich tend to make a lot more money from capital gains than regular people do, and they make much higher proportion of their income from capital gains than they do labor-based income. So a capital gains increase is really a form of wealth taxation, a form of profit taxation that's going to disproportionately raise money on the wealthy, and so therefore it's a good form of taxation to address income inequality. And a wealth tax is very similar. As you note, with the, with the wealth tax set at $50 million, and we could we could quibble over the specifics. Is that too high? Is that too low? The point is, is that there is support for this idea. It also ties in well with Jagmeet Singh's policy that he had during the leadership, which was to raise uh, an inheritance tax of 40% above his state's worth $4 million and more. So we can see that Jagmeet Singh has started to lay the groundwork around tax fairness, and adding a wealth tax to that suite, to that portfolio, is not only plausible, it fits within the characteristics of what he's done so far, but as we can see, it's fabulously popular with NDPers, liberals, and conservatives. Again, I can't stress that enough. This has a majority of support amongst all three of the major political parties' voting bases. There is no concerted opposition to this, except from, you know, the elite of this country. And this is a great opportunity for Singh. This is a great opportunity because he really needs to find an issue that's going to give him great political traction. And he started to do this, whether it's on pharmacare or housing or drug decriminalization or the start of his Green New Deal with the retrofitting program. All of these policies have great potential to help regular Canadians in their day-to-day -day lives. But one of the questions the NDP will always get Fair or not, because often the NDP is, runs lower deficits than liberal and conservative parties, but the NDP, in a way the other parties will never be asked, will always be asked, how are you going to pay for it? And one of the things Jagmeet Singh can do is say, well, look, yes, some of our plans are ambitious, but one, some of them pay for themselves over time because a pharmacare plan is way cheaper than dealing with people ending up in the ER because they didn't have their medicine. But two, we're going to pay for it through taxing the rich. And that's what I'm proposing through my new capital gains levy. But that's not going to necessarily be enough. And you might want to say, well, in addition to that, we're going to explore a wealth tax. And Singh could adopt this policy. He could adopt the 2% above 50 million. He could also add the extra percent above 1 billion. He could even go a little bit lower. He could go to 20 or 30 million and still probably find a similar level of support. And Singh could then make the argument that, look, not only are we striking a blow for tax fairness, and not only are we striking a blow for equality of opportunity, but we're building the funds we need to build the programs Canadians need. So it gives him a dual opportunity here. How are we going to pay for it? We're going to tax the rich. And while maybe conventional wisdom was that when the NDP said that, they would start to lose support because people would fear the tax man. As we see with this polling data, as long as you're very clear about the aim of your wealth tax and who it's being aimed at, it has a super majority of support. So it's a bulletproof policy in that sense. Ultimately, this is a great idea, folks. This is a great idea for the NDP politically, and they really need to be exploring the implementation ASAP. 
they don't need to drop it in the next couple weeks necessarily, but at the end of the day, this needs to be a part of the party's election platform because it will distinguish them from the liberals and conservatives and it will be a policy the liberals and conservatives will almost certainly not touch because it strikes so fundamentally against the interests of the elite who dominate those parties and who donate so much money to those parties. It's also something we really need to do if we want to address historic inequality. One of the limitations of, say, raising income taxes and even capital gains taxes really high to help address income inequality is that while that might work, we've recognized by that point that the historically earned income is just protected. That the wealth that the rich earned through a centuries-long rigged game, they get to keep it. Sure, we'll tax them on the income they make from it going forward. We'll tax them on the profit made from the investments of that wealth. But we'll never actually address the fact that the wealth they earned was ill-gotten, was part of a rigged process. And a wealth tax addresses this. A wealth tax says, hey, look, you with $75 million dollars. Not only are you going to be taxed on the profit you make from the interest and investment of that money, but we're going to tax you on the money itself because that was earned through a process designed to benefit the few and not the many. And we've decided that to build a fair society, we can't just start from now forward. We have to address the historical roots of inequality. And that is lodged in the wealth of Canada's wealthiest people. So look, you guys know this. I'm a card-carrying NDPer. Really support the party. And I think that if we want to make some headway in this election and build some momentum and get some news coverage, Jagmeet Singh and the party need to come out and support a wealth tax. It's time, it's something Canadians support, and it's something that fits the historic CCF NDP values. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd really appreciate if you like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me spread the message further and help to counter narratives in mainstream media that would try to bury this story when we really know that a majority of Canadians support it. I've also set up a Patreon fairly recently. It's going to help me not only deliver more frequent uh, content on a regular basis, but will help me improve the quality of that content from a technical perspective. So if you have the desire and the ability, I'd really appreciate your support on Patreon. I'll post a link in the description. Thanks again, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.